can see everything? Good, okay, cool. All right, awesome. Um, so first of all, I guess I'll preface this by saying I've never done this presentation before, so I'm gonna to try to keep it on, on time. If I'm struggling a bit, definitely anyone feel free to chime in and let me know I'm being too slow or too fast or whatever. So uh, yeah, first of all, hey everyone, my name is Brandon. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Phantom. Thanks for coming in and, and listening to me talk. Um, I'm gonna jump straight into it. So just a couple of things about what we'll cover here. So basically we'll just quickly go over what Phantom is, like a couple of things that you can do with it. A um, couple of notes about who we are as a team. Uh, a couple of cool safety features that uh, a user may not normally happen upon when using Phantom that I wanted to highlight, I have some interesting sort of technical implementations. Um, and then for the back half, uh, jumping into a couple more technical topics, talking exactly, talking about exactly what a wallet is, and if you're a, um, a Web3 application developer, how you might actually go about uh, starting to integrate Phantom. Um, so quickly, what is Phantom? So Phantom is the most popular wallet uh, to inter use to interact with the Solana ecosystem specifically. Um, so for those of you who ever used MetaMask before, uh, Phantom is the MetaMask equivalent for Solana. Um, we recently surpassed 1.8 million users. We're actually about to hit 2 million users. And uh, in our short lifetime of just six months, have facilitated uh, billions of dollars of transaction volume, uh, thanks to a vibrant community of uh, users and developers that have been pouring into the Solana ecosystem. So that's been really awesome. Uh, currently, Phantom is only available as a browser extension, but we're releasing an iOS app at the end of this month. Um, so what can you do with Phantom exactly? So, so what you would normally expect from a wallet, you can interact with cryptocurrencies, you know, kind of like in a portfolio view that you see here uh, that are issued on the Solana blockchain. So that includes things like Solana, Soul token, USDC, Tether, uh, but there's other native tokens like Radium and Serum. So it's very, an ecosystem that's quite similar to how uh, Ethereum is kind of set up. Um, but there's also sort of bridged versions of tokens from other ecosystems that you can manage on this uh, platform as well, including like things like Wrapped ETH or Wrapped Luna. Uh, but not only does Solana have a token ecosystem, it also has a vibrant ecosystem of NFTs. So uh, Phantom also lets you view and manage your NFT collection directly from within the wallet. And uh, in addition to just uh, basic sort of token management, uh, we also have a built-in swap feature in the wallet that helps you leverage, um, for example, decentralized exchanges built on Solana to swap coins. Um, and so, yeah, wallets have actually been around for a really long time, basically for the lifetime that cryptocurrencies have been around and, and Bitcoin. Uh, and for the most of their lifetime, wallets have been sort of known to be software that's primarily used for managing currencies. Uh, but over time, as people have discovered uh, uses for blockchain outside of just managing currencies, for example, blockchain apps uh, in the realm of DeFi or NFTs, uh, wallets have evolved uh, similarly by adding the ability to interact with applications. Um, and so because Phantom lives in the browser, it has this interesting ability to expose APIs to websites that allow developers to easily tap into the power of Web3 and leverage Web3 and you know, more on what that looks like later. Uh, but basically, if you're a Phantom user, you can use Phantom to interact with different Web3 apps uh, on the internet. Um, one more feature I just want to quickly highlight uh, is the in-wallet soul staking. Um, this is a cool feature because it kind of illustrates that wallets can also not only act as tools to help people manage their own currencies, but also act as tools for uh, contributing to networks themselves, uh, specifically Solana with a proof of stake model uh, by actually you know, providing a tool to actively uh, interact with the network. Um, so yeah, that was just a little bit about Phantom from a product perspective. Just, so just a little bit about us. Uh, we're a small distributed team of uh, NFT profile pictures that's working on really hard to develop sort of the West, best Web3 experience possible. Um, for more information about us, you can visit our website and there's also, we're also on Twitter at Phantom. Um, but yeah, next I just wanna kind of jump into a little bit more depth of a couple cool user safety features that we have that have cool engineering implementations behind them. So first, 
uh, is this transaction simulation uh, function. So when you're typically when you're interacting with the Web3 application with Phantom, there are times that an application may request a transaction approval from you. And so similarly, again, if you if you've ever used MetaMask before, if you for example, if you go up and buy an NFT on OpenSea, you um, may ask uh, the, the application may ask you to approve a transaction where you give the um, smart contract ETH and it gives you an NFT, similar if you're using Uniswap. Uh, because of the open-ended programmability of modern blockchain systems, it's actually not really straightforward for the wallet to understand what the side effects of a transaction will be. Uh, and when um, when you're actually uh, when a, the wallet actually receives a transaction to sign, it actually looks quite like this uh, piece down here, where there is a blob, a string, uh, you know, that represents uh, a smart contract, and then there's an even longer string of random uh, characters that represents the data that's being submitted to that contract. And so, from the wallet perspective, that's all it sees, and that's all. That's all it knows that's going on. And so, and that's, and in order to solve this, uh, in order to create a product experience like this for the user, we actually implemented a transaction simulation approach that allows us to better understand what happens uh, when a transaction is submitted. So for, for example, here, well, I can actually show you, turn that sort of opaque uh, string of random characters into an actual side effect of balance changes that's, that's tangible for the user. Um, so this feature not only helps the user better understand their transactions, but it also helps them uh, avoid malicious applications that might be asking them to approve you know, certain nefarious transactions. Um, and so unfortunately with the crypto space, the, the rise of scams and phishing uh, attacks has been quite a big topic and quite a big issue for uh, applications like ours to deal with. And you know, how, how might exactly a user might end up on one of these applications. Unfortunately, there's like quite a few avenues nowadays that fishers use to fool victims. So for example, a lot of people hang out on NFT discords um, and uh, scammers will hang around there and actually try to coerce people to uh, join bad links and stuff like that. Um, sometimes they will do things like hijacked keyword ads. So we've had you know the keyword phantom hijacked pretty much on a monthly or weekly basis. Um, and then a new one recently is that you may one day find your wallet um, filled with NFTs that actually have pictures that have instructions on how to go to different websites. They're not, so they're not even, the instructions are not even in plain text, they're just in these pictures. Um, and so this is sort of like a cat and mouse game that's sort of been evolving uh, quite rapidly over time. And I want to highlight one more feature that we've built to Sort of protect against this. So, um, to, so to help combat this problem, we've actually built a really cool website blocking feature that actually leverages the fact that we're that we are built as a browser extension. And so, uh, if you have Phantom installed and you actually try to visit a site that we have discovered to be malicious, you actually be greeted with this warning slash blocking message. Um, so, how, how does it work? So, we actually have a public Git repository that we use to maintain a list of malicious websites in a open and public manner. Any sites that get added to that list by either the team or the community at large um, will subsequently look like this uh, for phantom users. And we actually achieve this by leveraging Chrome extension APIs that allow us to interact with the websites that, that's currently being viewed. So, viewed. so much like how an ad blocker will reach into a website and actually proactively remove ads, uh, we're sort of using very similar APIs to go in there and pr proactively create uh, create blockers for you to access malicious websites. Um, so yeah, awesome. So so that's a, that's enough of features. Just wanted to quickly go into uh, a couple of uh, technical topics. So um, I think basically the most important part about the wallet is the secret recovery phrase. So what what is the secret recovery phrase exactly? When when you first sign up for Phantom or MetaMask or any other non custodial wallet and you collect create new wallet, uh, you're given a series of 12 random words that act as your quote unquote secret recovery phrase. In subsequent installations of Phantom, you can actually select this, I already have a wallet uh, option and then supply this recovery phrase back to the wallet. 
and you'll actually be able to uh, completely recover all of your assets and everything. Um, and what, so what are these words exactly? So in essence, these words are just randomness. Um, they are randomness that are portrayed as this series of 12 words to make it easy for users to store and remember. Um, these words can actually be converted to a 128-bit random value um, using this process called BIP39. Uh, once the wallet actually has this 128-bit number, uh, it can actually produce an infinite number of public and private keys that are, are unique to you. And this is sort of the essence of what a wallet is, is this randomness that can produce these, an infinite number of public and private keys. Um, and so, um, yeah, so once, the wallet, so once the wallet actually has that, it can actually go through this sort of algorithmic process to then uh, create a bunch of different keys that you can use and can always be recovered using the initial seed or uh, secret recovery phrase. And what does this actually mean in the app? Uh, well, users can actually add new wallets and identities from within Phantom very easily. So every time you can create a, a bunch of new wallets, you can have a, manage a bunch of public and private keys from within the application. And the secret, again, the secret recovery phrase can be used to recover all of these. Um, as a side note, uh, Phantom will also support importing one-off keys if you know the raw private key address that you own. So you can use, um, you know, not, not use a secret recovery phrase if you, if you don't want to. Um, so that's a little bit about secret recovery phrases. Um, now it's just, just the last note. I'll just jump into a little bit about what does it actually look like from a Web3 developer perspective to build a web app that interacts with Phantom? And all you really need to know is that if you are a Web3 developer, you're building a React app, something similar, all you need to know is that if you, you can detect the presence of a window.solana op object from within your application business logic um, in order to start interacting with Phantom. Uh, this API should be very similar to those who have built Ethereum-based applications before. We're looking for, similarly for a, a window.ethereum object to interact with MetaMask. Um, here is a TypeScript-style interface that describes the API of the window Solana object. By the way, this object also lives at window.phantom um, to kind of give the developer multiple options. Uh, but you know, there's basically a couple of things that as a developer you can get access to uh, once you start interacting with this interface. So you can ask uh, window.solana, what's the public key of the address that's currently signed in? You can send transactions, you can send multiple transactions, you can sign messages, uh, you can request to connect to the, to the wallet and, and all of that. So that's just you know, kind of a high level of some of the things that an API that, um, just to make it a bit more tangible, uh, how a Web3 developer might interact with Phantom. Um, and here's a little, a little script about what it might look like in action. So um, first, uh, a, an application might ask window.solana or Phantom to connect. Then it will for, might form a transaction, ask so the window.solana object to sign the transaction, and then actually go and then submit it to the blockchain. And uh, from the user's perspective, what that looks like, first, when you ask for a connection, uh, a user will be viewing a website and then get this pop-up from Phantom that asks them to uh, provide this application permission to connect. And then next, um, the application will form a transaction, then ask uh, Phantom to sign the transaction. And then at that point, you'll actually get a little pop-up here, uh, which includes like the estimated balance changes and everything that uh, you know, I mentioned before. Um, so yeah, you know, it's pretty simple API. If you're, again, if you're familiar with MetaMask, it's very similar from, not only from a user perspective, but also from a developer perspective. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to shout out a couple uh, things. If you're looking to start uh, developing on Solana, check out this awesome blog post. Uh, there's a link down here. Um, you can also send this PDF out to anyone afterwards uh, who wants to explore a bit more. Um, we also have a sandbox environment that uh, is um, sort of a, a, a demo project that helps you um, you know, with a starter project that shows you how to develop with Phantom and shows some of the some of the uh, things that I was showing off before. 
Uh, Solana it's themselves developed a drop-in package that helps you integrate multiple wallets at the same time. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want more information, you can find us at Phantom. Uh, I'm also at Twitter um, on Twitter at, at bchillman, and then we also have docs, docs at phantom.app. And that's it.